This is the 3D Space Mouse from 3D Connection. It has a pretty slick design, quite ergonomic, and it does feel like a premium gadget. It comes with a few keys and buttons that you can map and customize to any shortcut that you want, but the real deal is the six axis rotation that you get with the main dial. Hey, what's up guys, Pablo Munoz here, and welcome to another video. This time I'm gonna be doing a review slash tutorial of the Space Mouse Pro, a 3D mouse from 3D Connection. And full disclosure, the guys at 3D Connection were very kind to send me these mouse uh, for me to try it out and see if I can fit it within my workflow. But anything that I say in this video is based on my own opinion and it's my honest opinion uh, about my experience with this. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is bring in my video here so that you can see the actual the actual mouse and um, how it interacts with what I'm showing you on the screen, uh, especially so that you can see which buttons I press and how I manipulate this dial um, and how it reacts in, in, the, in real time on the screen. The software that you see here on screen is ZBrush and this is something that I use on a daily basis. So I thought maybe uh, we should start with this one, but the focus would be on the on the mouse uh, rather than the software. So I'm actually gonna show you a bunch of different software um, that are supported with the mouse 3D and how I've been trying to integrate it again with my workflow and, and customizing uh, all the different dials and, and buttons, but we're gonna get to that. All right, so first things first, the installation of the mouse is super easy, very straightforward. You just need to go to the URL that comes with the box or just go to the website, download the drivers, um, and then just literally plug in the cable, the USB cable, and you are pretty much good to go. Now, as soon as you install the software, um, this is what you will see, this thing right here. And honestly, this is all you need to, to sort of like get started and to and to learn how to use it. This is exactly what I did uh, to sort of understand the, the different axis and the rotation and how, how to use the, uh, the mouse. So this trainer is pretty handy. You can just click on trainer and it guides you through the process that I'm gonna actually show you. So I'm not gonna go into trainer, but it's basically um, teaching you how to use this dial um, because at the, at the beginning for me it was quite frustrating. I didn't understand what it was. I thought it was just a matter of rotating things around, but in all honesty, it feels like you are actually grabbing the 3D object and you can rotate and manipulate that 3D object. So I think it's quite important to go through the trainer and actually follow what it tells you because you will learn a lot faster. All right, so this is kind of like the software, pretty straightforward. I'm gonna close this thing now and now we can just go ahead and get started with this. One of the things that I really like about the mouse is the fact that when you switch between applications, it's automatically recognizing which application you use and you can map all of these um, keys and all of these shortcuts two different applications that use dif um, you know, different buttons. So the main thing that I need to highlight is that I feel quite awkward using the shift, the control, and the all keys um, with these fingers on the, on the left-hand side. Um, and these keys are quite important in ZBrush to, you know, shift uh, is used to smooth areas, control to mask, all to invert the effect of the brushes. So I found it to be, um, to be a little bit weird that they were placed on this side. So what I did was I took all of these things and I mapped them to the other side. So now in ZBrush, if I press the F, it actually inverts the effect of the brush. If I press the R, it acts as my masking brushes, as you can see here at the top right. If I press this other one, it, it acts as the shift, keys uh, and I have mapped a couple more things so this one right here is to undo and this one right here is to hold control and shift at the same time and that access my selection brushes so basically I'm just gonna do it with the with the index finger so that you can see better what I'm doing um, and actually let me use the the mouse first and get closer here and this is a character that I've been working on uh, for the past few weeks but you know it has a, a a fair amount of detail so that I can show you how I've been using this mouse. Right, so I'm gonna re reduce the size of my brush. And again, this brush that I have selected, the dam standard brush, allows you to do these sort of like crevices and just push in like that. Um, but in ZBrush, uh, whoops, let me undo that. <laughs> so in ZBrush, you can actually invert the effect of the brush. So you can be doing this type of wrinkles and, and crevices, but if I wanna make something that sticks out, I can just press the Alt key, that's why I map it to the F key here, and I can sort of create this, um, you know, these areas that are sort of sticking out for veins or, or something like that, right? And I can refine those, those ridges or those, um, 
I don't know exactly what they could be, but uh, I can just press Alt and do this type of thing and then let go and use the normal effect of the brush, right? The same thing goes for the smooth. So this one in the center, I use it all the time. That's why I put it here in the center. So that is, um, I don't have to actually look at it. I just feel where the, where the center is with the thumb and then just press it and I can just go ahead and do this. So I can smooth that area as you can see there, right? And then you can press, or I can press the R and in this case is for, for masking. So if I don't wanna affect certain areas, I can just press this one mask, something like that, and then I can press this one again and smooth all of that without affecting this area. And I can just clear that mask, right? The other tools that I, mask, that I map to this um, button, the button that has the letter T, is the control and shift, and that is just to isolate parts. So if I move away a little bit, I can go ahead and click on this one, isolate that part, I can go into solo mode, and I can just work just on the on the ear, right? And if I wanna bring everything back, I just press T again, click once on the canvas and bring everything back. So quite a, quite a revelation in terms of the productivity, the fact that I can obviously move around in here and I have my, my thumb um, has access to all of those tools at once. And I, fi I find it to be a bit more intuitive and more comfortable for me personally than accessing you know, with these fingers, the control, the shift, and the all. So I just mapped it to, to the other side. Um, that's all. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. Uh, just because I'm, I'm jumping a little bit ahead. Uh, so I just want to show you how the manipulation of this dial uh, works and what it actually does on screen. So if you take the whole thing and literally shift it like that, like if, you, if you're panning, like if you were to grab the entire model, the entire head that you can see here, and then just move it to the left or to the right, not rotating it, just literally moving it left and right, it is the same thing as panning left and right, right? So I'm just like touching slightly, but left and right. So you can see that it is panning left and right. Um, if you wanna pan the, the entire character or what, whatever you have on your, on your ZBrush or whatever you have in your software, up and down in terms of the panning is the same thing as grabbing this dial, push it up or push it down. So it's in relation to the screen. So you can push this up or down and you don't have to press harder or you don't need to pull harder. It's very, very responsive actually. And I love that about this, um, this manipulation that is very, very subtle and it doesn't like uh, create like crazy movements or anything like that. So again, left and right just to pan very, very intuitive, and then up and down to move this character or whatever you have on the screen on the 3D space, up and down, right? Then you have the rotation. So if, you, if I were to take the whole character and rotate it forward or backwards, I can just push this like that. And you see it is rotating forward or backward. And you can do the same thing if you hold the entire uh, dial and rotate it like that. And finally, if you want to zoom in and out, you can literally just take the whole dial and push it forward or backward. So if I do this, it just goes away <laughs> or I can just bring it closer to me. Right? And of course, um, this is not happening in one single motion. That's why you see it's not very straight, the movement. Because right now what I'm doing is kind of like this motion on the, on the dial. So I'm pushing it back, bringing it closer and moving left and right as well. So once you get familiar with these uh, tools and at least the, the movements of the dial, it becomes really, really handy and very intuitive to just go closer and start doing this sort of stuff, right? Because you, you don't need to think about the, the rotation anymore. Um, it, it becomes almost like second nature. And to be honest, I've only been playing with this for about two weeks. Uh, whatever the length of this um, that I've been working with this character and a couple of other projects. So it hasn't been that long and I'm feeling very, very comfortable with, um, with this already. So it doesn't take too long to, um, to get used to it because like I said, it's super, super intuitive. Um, and it's especially really handy when you get to this stage uh, that I am right now with this character where you start to add details and, and pores and things like that. So for instance, if I bring in one of the brushes that I have here, um, if I were to add details here or like pores, like I have in this case, uh, I'm going to start adding more and I'm going to press a little bit harder just so that you can see what I'm doing a bit more evident, right? So I'm just adding these pores, uh, but 
you know, it's in, in zero, you can just uh, hold right click, for example, and rotate. Um, you can use a couple of a combination of brushes to move away. But usually what you do in ZBrush is click outside in the canvas and that allows you to rotate. But when you are so close to this area, adding details, um, there's no empty space to, to sort of like click and rotate. So that's when this um, dial comes really, really handy because you can just get really close to add all the details that you want, um, then just move around and then go to the other side. Continue working here very close. Like so. Uh, so yeah, I found this to be incredibly helpful um, just using the, the 3D mouse or the 3D connection Space Mouse Pro with the pen. Uh, obviously, I'm using a Cintiq as well, so I can you know press harder or, or not uh, to get those um, that, that level of detail. So that's pretty handy. Now the other thing that I have here in ZBrush is mapped, uh, or I have mapped, is the number one, number two, and I think I mapped number three and number four, but I'll, I'll show you in a second. So number one, what it does, it brings a bunch of other tools that I use constantly. So it brings this palette, a UI element from ZBrush, not from 3D. Uh, not from the 3D space mouse, uh, but I just mapped it to a shortcut that gets triggered when I press number one. Same thing for my brushes. So if I'm playing around or you know working with this, let's say adding some pores in here, I'm just destroying this model. But um, like I said, I'm not giving you a tutorial on sculpting or detailing. It's more about the mouse itself. So if I'm working with these pores and I want to switch to a different brush, uh, I can just press number two and it brings this palette is my custom palette, so I'm going to start adding uh, maybe with a standard brush. I'm going to start adding more volume here, adding some wrinkles. And I decided, you know what, I actually need more wrinkles here. I can press two again, select the other brush, and start adding those wrinkles for, you know, for this area. So it becomes really easy just by pressing the, the number two, because I mapped all of these brushes that I use on a regular basis to the number two. Same thing for number one. For this, um, this custom palette, I can inflate things, polish, you know, all these more specific uh, tools that I use in my workflow. Uh, but that's mapped to number one and number two. And I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So if I go ahead and let me just move back a bit, right? If I go ahead and press this menu button, it brings, um, it brings the, obviously the settings, the menu from the actual Space Mouse Pro. Um, and what I love about this is that it recognizes immediately which software I'm using. So if I bring another software into the screen, it will recognize what it is uh, immediately. So with this one, um, you can click on Advanced Settings. I actually don't mess around with this much, especially not in ZBrush. I think the default settings are pretty powerful and I don't need to change anything. But if you want, you can click, for example, Speed and change how, you know, change how fast things move um, in the rotation, the panning, everything that I explained before. All right, I'm going to close that. But this is the one that I want to show you. When I click on buttons, and that brings this other, uh, this other window where you can literally just click any of these buttons. They're mapped around this, um, this window. You can click any of them, and then you can just li literally um, update it with whatever you want. So this one, number one, that says My Tools, that is a custom palette. Brush stuff is number two. That's another custom palette. And in number four, I have um, set up the solo mode. So I have a hotkey for solo mode that is the letter S. Uh, for me, it just makes sense to have it as solo. Uh, so I'm going to close this now. And that means that if I'm working on, let's say, the face and I want to jump to the to the jacket. In fact, I could be, you know, I could be in like full screen mode like that. I don't need to be working with, with the entire UI because all I need is in number one and number two. Um, but let's say that I want to work on the jacket, right? And the jacket is a separate object. I can just hold the Alt key, click on that, and now I isolated this. And then I can just click on four, and I'm just going to see just the jacket, right? And again, I can go ahead and bring in my damn standard brush and start doing some... Oops, that's too much. I, I also mapped the undo if you remember to this button, so I can just go ahead and do that. Uh, the reason I mapped it to this one is because, uh, I don't know, the, in, in terms of the touch, I can feel that this is just at the top left of the of the one in the middle. So it's very easy. I don't have to look at the actual mouse um, Space Pro. I just do this, and if I made a mistake, I just like feel where the thing is and press undo. Um, yeah, so again, I can start doing all of these uh, wrinkles, press two, maybe bring the standard brush to add more volume to those. Um, I can hold this this one, which is the shift one, to smooth everything out a bit. And if I want to 
you know, create a wrinkle that is a little bit more, more obvious like this, I can just go ahead and mask that area, holding the, the button that I mapped to my mask. I'm going to invert the mask. I'm going to bring in my move brush, for example, or actually I'm going to bring in the inflate. And I'm doing that with the bot button number two. And I'm going to inflate that. Right? I'm going to clear that mask. And now I'm going to smooth these areas. But all of this is happening with number one, number two, and with the thumb just to move around. And obviously the whole rotation and the whole movement is happening with this. Let's bring the rest of the character with number four. Um, and that's it. So this is just to say that everything that I've been showing you is because it works for my particular workflow. But the great thing about this is that you can totally customize it for your own workflow. So you can add in these buttons, whatever you want, your own custom palettes, your own custom shortcuts and that sort of thing. So I found this to be um, incredibly powerful and to move and to rotate around. It definitely has speed up my workflow. Um, at least the, the sculpting part of it. There are some things that I definitely use more with the, um, with the keyboard and it, it is hard to replace that because for instance, uh, if I'm using the C modeler, uh, which is the BZM, um, I have certain things that are a lot easier to work with uh, if I have the, the keyboard, right? But for the most part, for any detailing or sculpting, the Space Mouse Pro has been fantastic. All right, but this is not limited to ZBrush, obviously. I'm going to go ahead and bring in Keyshot, uh, which I have linked this, um, the renderer Keyshot to ZBrush, but I already have it open here. And in all honesty, Keyshot is my favorite software that works or like the, my favorite kind of like integration between the Space Mouse Pro and the, another software. So in this case, Keyshot, just because the way that I, that I can move around is super smooth and super intuitive as well. All right, so here's my character with a, with a basic setup for lighting. Um, and what I really love about this is that you can only just do tiny little rotations or, or moves and try to find like the perfect framing for this character. So yeah, having the, the dial to you know, freely position the camera with the tilting, the rotation in all axes, it makes it really easy to find the right angle to showcase the character, right? So um, this is the reason why I found this uh, to be quite handy, especially at these later stages or the final stages when I'm sort of like creating a render or a work in progress um, and I already have materials and I'm setting up this character for, um, for a quick render. This is a fantastic tool. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete a couple of stuff in here, and I'm going to turn this to zero, uh, maybe a little bit just so that you can see uh, what I'm doing. So I'm going to bring in, I'm going to show you basically how I would go ahead and light up a scene or light up a character and how I'm taking advantage of this new, um, or the Space Mouse Pro to easily move and, and manipulate those assets and, and move around <laughs> very freely in the scene. Uh, by the way, one thing that I should mention though, let's just push this one a bit more so that you can see what I'm doing. All of the things that I'm doing with the with this uh, dial uh, can be done with sliders and values from the camera. So if I go to the camera tab in here, uh, you have the distance, which is the equivalent to zooming in and out. You have the azimuth, which is to rotate around the axis or whatever axis you have uh, selected, basically up and down. Um, or the axis that go up and down. So you have inclination and then you have twist, right? So you can totally fine tune this. Um, you know, if I get a, if I want to do a close up, I can move around like that. I can rotate the inclination. I can move this a bit and then I can just position the camera up, up and down, right? But they're like uh, a little bit separated or they're not as, as unified as you would find with this type of, of tool. So if I move this dial, you'll see all of these sliders moving at once, depending on how I, <laughs> you know, what I do. And it's super responsive. So I can just very quickly get closer and find like a, a close up for the eye, maybe like that. Right. And I'm going I'm to wait until it dresses up a little bit. Or I'm I, the same in the same way, I can just try to find like a full body shot, maybe from the bottom, like a, like a hero shot like that. Right. But I'm manipulating all of these at once. And that's what I found like really, really valuable. All right. So let me just show you very quickly. If I remove some of the influence of the, of the environment, I'm going to go ahead and click on edit, go add geometry cube. And now I'm going to use the, the 3d space mouse to move around and you see the cube in here 
gonna push that one up as well. So this is just a cube, as you can see, but I'm gonna assign a light. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna attach that one in there. And now I have a light, or I have turned that cube into a light. So it's emitting a light that is pointing downwards. Um, so let's go ahead and remove altogether the influence of the environment. So it creates a more dramatic lighting. And I'm gonna go ahead and select that material that I just created. And I'm gonna increase it to, let's say 20. Uh, maybe that is too much, maybe 10, right? So it is a light that is coming from the top. I have the gizmo, um, you know, the the dial here in the 3D, 3D space mouse, um, but that allows me to move around at the same time that I can like position this light. Maybe I can rotate it a tiny bit um, and try to find a more interesting either angle or, you know, how to place it. So this is creating a, a bit of a split pattern here for the, for the light, which is uh, quite interesting. And let's go ahead and click OK. Maybe change the, the lighting color just to make a bit colder like that. And perhaps we can bring in a different light just as a, as a quick um, edge light or something at the back, right? So what I'll do is do just repeat, repeat the same thing, <laughs> really. I'm going to add a cube. It could be any type of geometry. This one right here. I'm just going to place it there. Um, it's a little bit hard to see because there's not a lot of light, but we have the gizmo. So as long as I drag and drop the, the light in, in the gizmo, it should be fine. Um, let's take that one. Just drop it in there. And now I can double click on that material and I'm going to exaggerate. I'm going to go for 50. And that way I can see the effect that is giving me that light. And again, just try to rotate and position these maybe at the back. So it's, it might be a, yeah, like a rim light or an edge light, something that comes from the back, um, something like that. All right. But it just makes it a lot easier to, to use the mouse and, and place and position and set up the scene, basically. That's what I'm getting at, uh, setting up the whole scene and placing the, the lights and try different things. It makes it really, really easy. And after a while, once you get used to it, it's super intuitive. I'm going to click accept that and I'm going to change again to a more colder light. Something like this. And now we have two lights and we can start playing around with the, with the final shot. Maybe go to the camera, create a new one. I'm going to call this one render four. And yeah, just try to find a nice camera angle. And another thing that I like to do is just play with the perspective. So you can flatten the perspective or make it a bit more exaggerated. So I'm going to use something like 65. Right. But another thing that I like, and uh, I've mentioned that before, is the fact that you can just very subtle, uh, do very subtle movements. You don't have to actually press really hard. And it just does little tweaks to the position. So this is the time or the, the stage of the process that I like to spend quite a bit of time because um, even doing something between this one and this one, it makes a big difference uh, depending on how you read the model, how you wanna, how you you want your audience to to read your um yeah your character in this case. So yeah, let's say I'm happy with this. I'm gonna save that and I can go ahead and render. But it makes it really really easy. All right, so I'm gonna pause uh, the rendering or the yeah the rest up of Keyshot, and I'm gonna show you something else, uh, another software that I've been using quite a bit. Uh, which is Blender. And I just want to show you Blender because there are specific setup that I did with the Space Mouse um, for Blender. So uh, in Blender, it works the same in the same way. You can use the dial to move things around. So this is the 3D space. Uh, this is a scene that I'm testing a few different things, kind of like a, a more cinematic shot. Uh, but I've set up a few things. So for example, if I press the number three, it just goes into this full screen mode and I can just sort of find a much better, I don't know, like a a better shot, like a better angle. Um, let me just show you what this scene is because it looks a little bit messy. Uh, it is slightly, it's a little bit, it's a little bit heavy, so it might take a while to to compile all the shaders. But I'm gonna click on that and let's see if it gives you, if I can show you basically what it is. There we go. So this is um, this is Blender Eve, so it's rendering in real time. I'm gonna turn off a bunch of things that we don't need. Um, so it's rendered in real time. So in this case, I would use it pretty much in the same way I did uh, Keyshot, right? Or that I use in Keyshot. So uh, as, a, as a very fancy tool to find the right camera angle. So like with little tweaks um, to, the, to the dial. 
right? Something like that. And again, it's a pretty heavy scene. So uh, in this case, it's not it's not as responsive because I have like 4K textures in, in some of these things and there's a lot of polygons going on. But um, yeah, other than that, once I have the frame of the camera, it's, uh, it's actually pretty, pretty easy. So you can create <laughs> things like that, just find like interesting camera angles. And like I said before, if you wanna make something a bit more dynamic or more interesting, I just wanna tilt it a tiny bit, maybe push that up a little bit. With little nudges, so something like that, it makes it maybe the, op the opposite way, not that much. Um, maybe something like this. There we go. So basically, so that the horizon is not, uh, it's not a straight line or a flat line. It's more like a diagonal. It makes it a bit more uh, intriguing, especially for the the mood that I'm going for. Uh, obviously, you can do all of that with you know with the settings and the camera and everything. But just with um, when you're trying to figure out what the the scene should be and figuring out the mood and figuring out the you know the framing, something like this is just a lot easier and a lot faster. So I'm gonna get out of this and get out of fra uh, full screen with number three. And this full screen is just the control space uh, that you know is the shortcut in Blender, so I can use it for any any uh, any window. So I can hover over this one, press three, um, all of that. So you can set this up in the in any way that you want to. So a couple more things that I have set up, and before I get to the, uh, I would say not advanced, but the most, uh, yeah, let's call it the most advanced. Uh, tool here in the 3D space mouse. So if I press the um, number one, so let's select, um, actually, let, let me just create a cube. It's probably a lot easier to show you that. Um, oh, I created a circle, so I'm gonna delete that. Um, cube, that's the one that you need. And I wanna turn on these overlays so uh, the one that I that I want to show you is this gizmo so I press I can press this and this is a, a radial menu that is from the 3d space mouse so you can attach a bunch of different shortcuts uh, or commands in here that allows you to very quickly manipulate an object so I have you know I kept it very simple so you can frame that that object you can uh, press the G or grab it you can press s and scale or rotate so in this case, I have that already selected. So all I have to do is hover over this one and keep going down. If I do that, I can just move the object like that. And I can press this again and do the same thing just to move it around. Now, if I want to, um, for instance, in this case, I just moved it too much and I don't know where it is in the screen. I can press the same gizmo and this time I can go to the number, um, number pad deal or delete, which is to frame that mesh, right? So that's the reason why I mapped it into this uh, single um, button here, but uh, with number one in my in my 3D mouse, I can click on that and I can enter in edit mode. I can go ahead and select a, um, a face like this, and I can bring in the gizmo again or or this uh, radial menu thing, and I can rotate that face if I need to. I can scale that as well, or I can just move it around. Right, so it becomes very uh, very intuitive. Very, it's a very quick way to um, to work. I might not be using you know all the right tools or the same tools that you might be using in Blender. But uh, I found that this, you know, keep it simple like that. It really, really helps. And again, press one to get out of tab and that is object mode. Now, if I want to delete this, so I'm going to move away. Not sure what, oh, it's, it's here. So if I, if I want to delete this cube, uh, what I can do is press four and four is the, is mapped to the letter X and that will delete that. And I can just select something like the, the horns in here bring in my gizmo and center it, right? So you kind of like need to learn or or at least this is what I found to be useful, like creating something like this and just learn the, the action of the mouse, like the which way you should click. <laughs> so that way you can either center it or scale, rotate and, and that sort of thing. And you can create as many uh, gizmos or as many radial menus as you need to. And you can up to, I think you can make up to eight different ones per gizmo and you can have one gizmo on each one of these buttons. So uh, that's pretty handy. Now this is uh, what I wanted to show you in terms of, of the Blender uh, setup. So I'm gonna click on menu to bring the, the 3D space menu so that I can show you how to set that up. All right, here we go. So there are a couple of things that I also tweak in Blender and this is the reason I'm showing you 
this uh, this part of the video because in reality is the same thing. I'm just showing you more of the same with a different application. But in this in this specific case, I tweaked a little bit of how the rotation and the tilting um, works, so it's more customized. And that is within the advanced settings. So if you click advanced settings, um, you see you have these dials. By default, they're all in the middle. I just went ahead and tested out. You know, if I move between left and right or up and down or rotate around those are the things that i wanted to to tweak so for me the the panning the going up and down on this on the um, on the whole scene and rotating things around was a little bit too fast so i just decreased the speed of that um but yeah you can do that on your own i just wanted to show you where that is uh, and you can fine tune it and what's really cool about this whole uh, setup is that it depends on what application you are, you you have open or you are using the the mouse actually recognizes where you are so right now it recognizes that i'm in blender so these settings are different that if i jump into keyshot um i also tweak the the tilting and the and the inclination so these two they were a little bit too fast so i just moved them down a little bit same thing with uh, with ZBrush. Uh, the speed in ZBrush is default. I found that the, the settings for ZBrush are pretty good, so I didn't touch that, but you can do that absolutely if you wanted to. So let's go back to Blender. Um, make sure that it recognizes that it's Blender. Here we go. So you can change those things in there. Now I'm going to close that and go back to the buttons to, so I can show you how to build the, you know, the gizmo or the radial menu for this. So I'm going to click on buttons and here we go. This is the ones that I created. So I have uh, three different ones that, that I was just testing. Uh, so I have my new tools, more tools, and basic gizmo. So if I click the T, um, which is, let's go ahead and click on this, um, on this arrow. Let's go to the radial menu here. And I'm going to edit the, my new tools. So I'm going to click on this icon here, and I can edit which ones I have. So let's give it a different name just so you know. Um, let's call this one Super Tools. <laughs> or something like that. Uh, again, you can just select eight or four, depending on how many you want. Uh, I think personally, eight is too much or like too many options, and I will forget. Whereas four, uh, I just need to remember if I press this button, if I go up or if I go down, if I go left or right, there is going to be an action assigned to that. Whereas if you have eight, you know, it becomes a little bit more uh, cumbersome, at least for me, but you know. You might be you might have better memory <laughs> so let's go ahead and set this to four as it is and you can attach any any shortcut that you want so you can have the shift set which is going to switch between in my case how i set up blender between the shaded version and the wireframe um i'm going to remove that one i'm going to use uh, something else maybe pressing the letter m right and the m is just to move things into a different collection uh number pad five and seven just to show you something different that's it. So you can put anything that you want here, any combination of layers, uh, of, of letters and shortcuts. Click close. And the way that we can get these super tools is with the T. But obviously, you can put it in any one um, that suits your needs. All right, so I'm going to close that. I'm not going to need it. And let's go ahead and press the T. And then we have Shift Z that will switch to between these two. So it's the same thing as clicking on that. But if you're working, it's a lot easier to just go ahead and do this. And all you have to do is press that uh, T, go up, and it will switch automatically. You don't have to click anything. Just the motion of the mouse uh, will do it for you. Or you can do, let's say, if I press or if I go to the left, it will get up. It will go up. So again, you can sort of customize it the way that you want to. This, um, In this case, in fact, let's just go ahead and bring in the buttons Right, because it makes more sense to have the action going up and see the, the camera from the top. Or at least it makes sense to me. So I'm going to click on buttons again. And I'm going to go to my super tools. And I'm going to edit super tools. And the number pad 7, which is the shortcut to send the camera or to see the camera from the top, I'm just going to put it in number 1. So I'm going to change this around. So Shift Z would be here. And this one will be number 7. That's all I'm going to do. Close that. So now, um, if I go into full screen, I would remember that, OK, if I want to see the scene, and if I'm laying out the scene and trying to understand uh, where all these things are placed, I'm just going to look at it from the top. So I can just press T and move my mouse upwards. And now I can see the whole scene, right? 
So that's quite handy to me, um, or at least I would remember it a lot better. Uh, but the other ones that we created is number five, and that will switch between perspective and non-perspective. So this is an orthographic camera. Again, pressing T, and it's just, a, it's just a matter of remembering kind of like the motion of the mouse, and that's what makes it, uh, at least for me, it makes it a, a, bit, a bit more intuitive. And the same thing, Shift-Z to switch to this wireframe. And the M is if I want to, let's say, if I want to select the, I don't know, let's, uh, <laughs> I have too many things in this, but let's select this, uh, these branches and, and the horns. I can also press Shift in here and select these two, and maybe these, uh, the tree as well. And I want to move this into a group, or Blender calls them um, collections. I can, again, press T and go to M. Oops, let's do it again. M, and click on New Collection, and I'm going to call this Test, and click OK. And that way, we can go back to the full screen, and it's here. So in the test, in the collection test, I have all of those things, and I can toggle them off or on and off, right? So. It obviously depends on your workflow, the way that you work. But for me, this is a, a pretty straightforward way to set this up um, because I use Blender in a very specific way. Um, there's hundreds of different things and ways that you can use Blender. And in fact, I'm not probably using it even <laughs> in, the, in the right way. I'm still learning it, but um, this is what I, what I found to be useful. Like you can just set it up this way. And if you find a better workflow or you want to improve it, you can just change things very quickly. Alrighty, so just to wrap up this video, because it's becoming a little bit too long now, I'm going to switch to Photoshop, and I'm going to show you how I use or how I set this up. Uh, unfortunately, Photoshop doesn't support the, unless you are in the 3D uh, space in Photoshop, unless you have uh, a 3D object and work, let's say, if you go to Windows and you set it to 3D and you have a 3D object, it would work uh, perfectly fine. But in, in the case of like 2D images, which is, uh, how I use Photoshop for for the most part, uh, it is not supported the the rotation of the canvas. So I just use the this dial to move and pan things around. So I can zoom in and out, and then I can pan up and down, right? In the same way. So if I want to go up and down, sorry, if I want to go up or down, what I what I do is I take this dial and I push it up or I push it down. Same thing if I want to move left or right, and if I want to zoom in and out, I just push it in or out. Right, and that way I can just navigate this very easily. It is exactly the same thing as pressing the spacebar and do this, or just um, holding Control and plus and minus. Uh, it's the same thing, but it just does it a lot more, you know, more subtly. I, I suppose um, it's very subtle and it's very, very smooth actually. So Control uh, plus and minus, as you see, they're like just increments. Like it's incrementing too much. In fact, you will see it if I bring in the navigator. If you pay attention to this value here, you see it goes to 100%, 66, 50, 33, 50, 66, and so on and so forth. But whereas the with this with this tool, you can just do like very very subtle changes, and that might not seem like much, but it is actually super handy, especially when you're trying to do refinements and paint over and uh, tweak a few things. So if I want to paint something, what I'll the, the way that I use this is create a new layer. Uh, I'm just going to do a pretty bright color just to, to show you what I do. Uh, let's say changing this color here, I will just use the, the dial to get closer here and just continue painting something like that. Um, maybe I would fade that, maybe with a... Um, with a different tool, just match that in. And this is how I could blend this color a little bit better, like more naturally at least. Uh, but yeah, the, the whole point is that the, the mouse is allowing me to, to move this and be very precise about how I move in Photoshop. And of course, you have the ability to map all the things. So for me, when I'm doing compositions and when I'm working with this type of characters and, and finalizing the just getting to the final stages when I'm going to present this as a concept. What I'll do is I like to flip the composition. So I have that set up to number one. So I press one and it just flips that composition so I can judge how it's looking. Press that again. Um, and another thing that I, that I do, and again, this is something very personal for my, well, something that you might not find as useful or you might not find that you need to give priority to is the fact that I work with multiple um, 
documents at once. Sometimes I have the same composition duplicated twice because I have uh, two different you know, um, effects and I cannot decide which one is better, that sort of thing. So right now I have a different angle for this character and all I have to do is press the number two and that basically switches to another document that I have open. So if I have three or four, it will cycle through those documents. Um, the shortcut in Photoshop is Control Tab, just so you know. So that's the shortcut that I map to number two. So I can switch between this and this. And with number one, I can flip the composition. And it's something that, uh, that happens, you know, it's, it's kind of like second nature for me just to start working and I can be painting, adding stuff and then press one again, check the composition from the other side, make sure that it is, uh, that it holds and that it, that it works from every single angle. Uh, but yeah, that is, that is essentially how I set it up in Photoshop. I haven't actually used any other tool or any other uh, button in Photoshop. Uh, for me, this is all I need for Photoshop. But obviously, if you do maybe like photo manipulation or uh, other type of stuff, this, um, you know, you might take advantage of other tools. For me personally, this is, this is all I need. <laughs> um, I, I want to, you know, keep it simple. But yeah, that's, that's how I set it up in Photoshop. So as you can see, it can be used in a bunch of different software and in a bunch of different ways. Uh, obviously, the way that I set it up for Photoshop is less complex than the way that I set it up for Blender because the, the way that I use this software is, you know, is very different. All right, and that's about it for today. Uh, hopefully you have found this review slash tutorial on how to set up this 3D Space Mouse um, helpful. And, you know, I'm, I'm also learning as I go. So this is kind of like a, an introduction, like an insight into how I'm trying to figure this out as I go. So if you have any questions or comments, any feedback for these type of reviews, uh, feel free to put them in the comments below this video and I will see you next time. Cheers.